Hello CS211ers. Uh, this is a short video that will introduce you to how to write a proper equals method that takes an arbitrary other object and compares the class you're writing uh, to it to ensure uh, that you are able to handle and properly override the inherited object equals method. What you see on the screen before you is a very simple class. Uh, it is the chord class keeps track of a 2D coordinate, a row and a column that are integers. This is useful for things where you're keeping track of stuff on like a 2D grid in a little game or maybe a tile sort of game. Uh, we may at some point construct such a program that requires a, a chord like this. Uh, so in order to make a chord, you need to feed it an initial row and an initial column shown here in the constructor. And all that does is initialize the two fields of the class, uh, the row and the column, uh, those fields are final, so they are not able to change after that. So uh, coordinates are a fairly static thing. Once created, uh, they never change. The two-string method uh, properly returns a nice uh, formatted version of that uh, with the row and the column uh, in parentheses. Uh, and down at the bottom is an equals method. Uh, it takes another coordinate. Uh, so demonstrate. Uh, I'll make myself a chord x equals a new chord. Uh, it takes one, two. And maybe another chord that looks like that. Here's a Y. Maybe then a third chord Z equals a new chord uh, 3, 4. Uh, so I compared these guys. Uh, you should know at this point that the shallow comparison that's done by equal equals um, will not return correct results because it's comparing memory addresses usually. And since x and y are distinct coordinates stored at different places in memory, they are not shallowly equal to each other. Uh, but if we do a deep comparison with the provided equals method, uh, x dot equals y, uh, a proper deep comparison will be done. Uh, the method invoked will come up here and decide uh, row of x is equal to row of y, yes, and row of x or column of x is equal to column of y, yes, uh, they are indeed equal to each other, return true there. Uh, whereas a x dot equals z uh, will return false because they differ on both row and column. You should also know at this point that all objects in Java descend from the big daddy object called the class object. Uh, that means I'm able to create object versions of these guys because an object can hold any potential kind of object, including coordinates. Uh, and if I ask you to display yourself, you display yourself nicely invoking the proper two-string uh, method via dynamic dispatch. Uh, I'll make another one of these. Uh, for an OY. Now at this point is where the trouble sort of starts. Uh, asking if OX is shallowly equal to OY uh, does the proper thing, returns false because they are distinct places in memory. Uh, on the other hand, a deep comparison of OX to OY uh, returns the troubling false answer. It takes a little bit of work to understand why this is happening. Um, but you should know that through the inheritance hierarchy, coordinate has inherited some methods from its parent class, which is object. And one of the methods uh, that is inherited uh, is one called equals as well. Only difference is that it takes, instead of a coordinate argument, an object argument. So this method here uh, that I'm about to comment out um, isn't, does in fact exist, except the implementation of it is higher up in the class hierarchy, belongs to object. That is the version that's getting called because upon inspecting uh, the available methods for coordinate, uh, this one looks for, uh, this invocation out here looks for a version that takes a coordinate, or uh, takes an arbitrary object, uh, OY, uh, as an argument and finds the only version takes a coordinate. Uh, so we'll look up the class hierarchy at object and find the appropriate method up here. So the trick to getting these right uh, is to override the existing equals object method that's inherited from Big Daddy object. Now, uh, normally what people try to do right off the bat is copy and paste code from what they'd write for uh, an equals method and maybe adjust parameters. For instance, it's called C down here, chord C. Uh, it's called object other up here, so I'll change names from C to other. Uh, and try and compile to get my uh, new version up and running and be badly disappointed. Uh, Java compiler is unhappy about this, uh, and the reasons are as follows. Let's see, it says variable row uh, in the location of a java.lang.object. Well, of course, an arbitrary other object isn't guaranteed to have a row. 
For instance, if a string were passed into this, because a string is a kind of object, so that invocation would be valid, uh, strings don't have rows. Uh, neither do scanners, neither do files. So I need a way around this. I need a way to get a viewpoint on this object as either it's an arbitrary other object, in which case I don't care what it is, I'm, my coordinate is not going to be equal to it, or I need to treat it as a coordinate, as in gain access to that row and column field so I can go through with my uh, comparison properly. So first step in this is to figure out, uh, is other an instance of uh, chord? Notice the keyword light up there uh, in blue, instance of. Uh, it's an operator that's sort of like, is your class equal to this other class? Uh, I say equals, and that's sort of loose term because this actually will check all the way up the class hierarchy. For instance, it will almost always be true that the other thing is an instance of object. Uh, but we're interested in chord right now. Uh, and so if this indeed is an instance of a chord, I'd probably do some stuff uh, with chord in, in here. Now, I tend to write code that sort of eliminates possibilities. So I'll actually flip this around. Say, if you're not uh, equal to an instance of chord, um, as in the thing that I've been handed is something else, like a string or a file or whatever else, I know definitively at this point, ah, I can return false because this chord is just not going to be equal to that other thing. Um, in the case that I make it through that call, uh, then the thing that I'm looking at must be castable, must be an instance of the coordinate class. Uh, so I'll, at this point, be able to create a coordinate out of it by saying, hey, Java compiler, I know it's slightly dangerous to do this, but seriously, treat this other thing as a coordinate. Uh, the parentheses indicate a cast. Some of you are probably familiar with this from the numeric contests. Uh, here I have a double, I want to treat it uh, as an integer uh, by rounding it or truncating it, uh, and you can cast by putting int in parentheses, or maybe the other direction, uh, cast an int to a double, that does a conversion. Uh, this is a similar thing, uh, except that uh, the thing over here, other, has to be an instance of core class for this to work. Um, it's actually a slightly dangerous thing. It can cause runtime errors. Uh, for instance, I have this object uh, OX sitting around. Um, we know it's an OX instance of chord. Uh, that returns true. Uh, on the other hand, if I ask, are you an instance of string, it returns false. Which means if I try to cast uh, OX as a string, I'll get a class cast exception, a nasty runtime error. Compiler can't check whether or not this is going to happen, so be careful as you're doing that you shield any casting that you're going to do uh, with checks for instance of, uh, that I can guarantee that this is safe to do. Okay, uh, but now at this point, uh, things can proceed uh, rather nicely. I've got now in hand a coordinate, see other. Uh, it's just sort of a view of this other object uh, as a coordinate. Uh, but I know that uh, coordinates have rows and columns. Uh, so I'll just change names here, uh, see others row, and uh, see others column. Uh, and this will do the deep comparison that I've been longing for all along. I believe we should be oh, an OK business now. So compile. Uh, compiler says A OK on that front. Uh, come back up here. I'll get my OX and I'll get my OY and proceed to ask are you dot equals to each other and get my proper true. Uh, just to verify, here's an OZ that has a 3 and a 4. Uh, and I'll ask ox dot equals oz and be pleasantly surprised, or not, I guess not surprised, uh, but happy uh, that equals seems to be working properly. So the final thing that you usually want to do uh, is to knock out this version of equals. You can keep around if you want, uh, potentially play with it and call that version up here, but most folks just keep a single equals around for simplicity. Uh, the version of equals that's inherited from object is overridden up here, takes an object argument, uh, and this is the one that will do the D comparison. That should put you in good shape in order to create your own equals methods that take an object argument, uh, for instance, in some of the projects that we'll be doing. Uh, hope you enjoyed it, and stop back uh, next time if you want more information uh, on Java equality.